Hi, international students at Cal Lutheran. Welcome to your Understanding CPT workshop video. I will walk you through everything you need to know about curricular practical training or CPT. We will take about 15 minutes and go over the following sections. What is CPT? The eligibility criteria. CPT hours you're authorized to engage in. The difference between paid versus unpaid internships and volunteering. And finally, the application process overview. So let's get started. Curricular practical training or CPT is an authorized off-campus or on-campus internship or work position that can be paid or unpaid, directly related to your field of study and linked to an academic course or program completion requirement as referenced in the university's catalog which means that you must earn credits for the course that requires you to engage in CPT. And you must be enrolled in this class for the full term while engaging in your internship or work position. CPT is only authorized for the specific semester or term that corresponds to your enrollment in the internship or practicum course. For example, if you're granted CPT for fall semester, so from August 28 to December 15, your internship must follow these dates. In other words, if we look at the eligibility criteria, you must be enrolled in a degree program in which off-campus experience is an integral part of the curriculum, such as an internship course or the equivalent that you're earning credits for. You must be in good academic standing. Undergrad must maintain at least a 2.0 cumulative GPA and a 3.0 for grad students. And you're enrolled full-time or you have been approved for a reduced course load or RCL. You have met the one academic year requirement, which means that undergrad students must have completed two semesters prior being eligible for CPT or three terms for grad students. There are a couple of special cases associated with this one academic year requirement such as if you're an F1 student engaging in a study abroad program, you must have been enrolled as an F1 full-time student for one academic year prior to your study abroad experience. If you're a student holding another type of visa who is currently changing status to F1, you must meet the one academic year and full-time F1 status requirement. If you're a graduate student, whose program requires immediate participation in an internship as detailed in the graduation requirements with verification from their academic program director, you may do so. If you're transferring from another US institution to continue studies at CLU in the same degree program of study at the same level, may use the time spent in lawful F1 status in the previous school to fulfill this requirement. Students will, however, need to submit their previous school transcript to verify full-time enrollment along with their CPT request. Please take note that a student transferring from an intensive English language training program is not eligible for practical training. If you're unsure about your own eligibility, please schedule an appointment with the OISS staff to discuss it and plan ahead and also find additional information on the CPT FAQ document available on our website. Now, how many hours per week are you allowed to engage in under CPT? During the academic terms and semesters, students may work part-time CPT, which means less than 20 hours a week. An exception to this rule would be graduate students who have completed all program requirements and are registered in only thesis or dissertation credits may be eligible to work full-time CPT. During breaks for undergrad or terms off for grad, students may work full-time, which means up to 40 hours a week. During undergrad breaks or grad terms off, and depending on the academic program internship course offering, students may only be registered for the internship course and still maintain their F1 status during these breaks or terms off. 
During the final semester or term, CPT is limited to part-time, again, less than 20 hours per week. The student must be enrolled at CLU and physically present on campus in order to comply with F1 requirements. If you're enrolled part-time because you do not need a full course load to complete your remaining degree requirement, you must receive a reduced course load or RCL. You can request this authorization from the OISS portal. If you're in compliance with these enrollment and physical presence requirements, then you may pursue CPT during your final term of study. CPT in your final semester or term is limited to part-time, up to 20 hours per week. Exceptions apply. Please refer to the CPT FAQ document on the OISS website for more information. Things may look a bit different for PLTS and PhD students, depending on the program they're enrolled in, and they must refer to the program curriculum and connect with their academic advisor, along with the OISS advisor, to clarify the specificities. Because CPT is part of the academic program of study, CPT is counted separately from on-campus employment and CPT work hours do not impact on-campus employment work hours. For example, students can work up to 20 hours per week on campus and additionally up to 20 hours per week on part-time CPT. Please note that if you're approved for full-time CPT for one year, you will not be eligible to apply for OPT in the future. Now, can you claim benefits for your CPT? The answer is yes. Internships may be paid or unpaid. If they're directly related to your program of study, you're obtaining course credits and working in a facility off campus or a campus site that provides services to the community, you must still go through the steps and apply for CPT approval. Any remuneration is considered a paid internship, for example, gift cards, free parking, lunch, accommodation, and so on. All of those are considered payment. They require CPT approval. You also cannot be retroactively paid or in any way compensated for work done in an unpaid internship if they obtain work authorization. You do not need CPT authorization if the volunteer slash unpaid position does not lead you to obtain course credits. Please, however, check with the employer to ensure that labor laws are not being violated with this type of arrangement. For example, would an employer otherwise hire someone for this role? If so, it is difficult to consider it a volunteer position. Volunteering is a great way to make a difference, help people where there is a need, and participate in your community. As an F1 student, you may volunteer while you study in the United States, but you must maintain your non-immigrant student status by complying with Department of Homeland Security rules and regulations. Please refer again to our CPT FAQ document on the OISS website for more information. So are you now ready to apply? If you think that CPT is for you, then let's learn more about the application process. As an important reminder, students cannot begin working until he or she has received a CPT I-20 from OISS and the employment start date has been reached. Failure to obtain official OISS approval prior to starting work will result in the loss of F1 status. First, you need to determine the best time to do your internship. To do so, meet with your academic advisor and your OISS staff and plan ahead. For PLTS students only, they must contact their academic advisor for guidance regarding the internship placement. Once a placement is obtained, the offer letter must be attached to the CPT request in the OISS student portal. The job offer letter must be on company letterhead with a brief job description, employment start date, end date, hours per week, and supervisor's contact information. Second, once you have a timeline figured out, you need to secure an internship related to your major 
and that has educational benefits. You're free to go to interviews, sign your employment contract prior get, getting your CPT authorization. You, however, cannot start working or engaging in training prior getting your CPTI 20. Three, the CPT application is a two-step process. First, you must go to the Career Services website and fill out the Cooperative Education Agreement form. The link is provided on our website. If you have never worked in the US before, you will likely need to also apply for a Social Security card or SSN. Make sure to download the SSN application checklist on the Career Services website and follow the steps alongside your CPT application. Four, submit the signed and approved form to your CPT request on the OISS student portal. Meaning, once you submit your Corporate Education Agreement on the Career Services website and download the PDF, this is not yet your final version since all parties have not signed it yet. You must wait to receive all approvals and all signatures, then upload the final document on your OISS portal. Your final step is indeed to submit everything on your CPT request on the OISS portal. Get our approval and receive your updated I-20 with CPT endorsement. You will receive this endorsement within five to seven business days. You will receive an email from our office once your CPT I-20 is ready for pickup at the Center for Global Engagement. And last but not least, begin your internship when you're authorized to do so and you have picked up your CPT endorsed I-20. To recap, some final takeaways of this workshop videos. Make sure to plan ahead. To complete your CPT application, you may need to meet with your academic advisor, career services, and OISS to make sure that you're eligible and your dates align. Each department may take up to seven business days to review and approve your request. You must be and remain enrolled in an internship class or its equivalent while you're engaging in your internship that follows the approved academic calendar dates. You're required to obtain a new I-20 with CPT authorization that shows you have permission to participate in an internship prior engaging in it. Failure to do so will result in a loss of your F1 status. If you're approved for full-time CPT for one year, a total of 12 months during one's program, you will not be eligible to apply for OPT or optional practical training in the future. Be aware of the major differences between paid internship, unpaid internship, and volunteering, and check with the employer to ensure that labor laws are not being violated. Thank you for your attention to this workshop. You're now ready to apply for CPT. But if you have any additional questions, please contact us at international at calutheran.edu and make sure to review the instructions section of your CPT request on the OISS portal along with the CPT FAQ document. All links quoted in this workshop are also available at this location. So good luck.